Now we'll talk about the example of a bomb being dropped by an airplane. And over here on the left side, you see the bomb fastened underneath the belly of the airplane, and it's released and it falls downward. What you see in this picture is the airplane shown at four different moments in time, and these moments in time are equally spaced. The plane's moving at a constant speed, so the distance it moves in each increment of time is the same. The bomb, though, accelerates down, so the vertical distance that it, that it has fallen after each increment of time gets larger and larger. It gains more and more downward speed. As always, the key to understanding this or solving a problem of this nature is to treat the horizontal and the vertical motion independently. Now when the plane is flying and carrying a bomb, at the moment the bomb is released, the bomb has the same velocity as the aircraft. In other words, its initial velocity is not zero, and you see this initial velocity vector drawn in the diagram. The initial velocity is the initial velocity of the plane. In this case, the bomber is flying horizontally. That means the bomb has an initial horizontal velocity. And in this case, it doesn't have any initial vertical velocity. Once it's released, though, it begins to accelerate down due to gravity. But it also continues the forward motion that it had when it was being carried by the plane. So this forward motion of the bomb has to be taken into account by the people doing the bombing, or they're going to miss their target. If they were to wait till the plane were right here over the target and then release the bomb from directly above the target, the forward motion of the plane, which gives the bomb forward motion, that would carry the bomb forward of the target, and it could miss the target by a substantial amount. So the, bomb, the bombardier has to take into account the forward motion of the plane and its, its height above the ground and release the bomb a certain horizontal distance before it gets to the target, such that by the time it uh, falls that distance to the ground, it has moved forward that distance and hits the target. And exactly how far in advance of the target the bomb needs to be released is a projectile motion problem. In this example, we're told that a bomber is flying at an altitude of one mile and a speed of 300 miles per hour. And this might be typical of a World War II bomber. There were different types of planes that flew at various speeds and all different sorts of altitudes for different bombing runs. But this might be typical for a World War II bomber on a bombing run. And we're asked to find how far ahead of the target must the bomb be released. So here's what we'll do. I'll start by converting things into our standard units, uh, meters and seconds. One mile is 1,609 meters. And then the 300 miles per hour, I'll do a unit conversion. I know that there's 1,609 meters in one mile. So the miles will cancel out. And I know that one hour is 3600 seconds, so the hours cancel out, and I'm left with meters per second. And when I do the math here, 300 times 1609 divided by 3600 is 134 meters per second. So that's the initial velocity. Now to solve this, I treat the horizontal and vertical motion independently. So I'll do the vertical this case, uh, do, do the vertical first in this case. I know the vertical distance. It's one mile or this many meters, 1,609 meters. So I can find the time it takes the bomb to fall. The time that it falls depends only on the height. The horizontal speed doesn't affect the time it takes to fall. So vertically, this is what I know. V0, the initial velocity, vertically is zero the planes flying horizontally. The acceleration will be 9.8 meters per second squared. This is assuming that down is the positive direction. And then I can say the initial position is zero and the final position is 1,609 meters. And it might help you to make a little sketch to, to visualize that. You can 
draw the bomb here. It's moving along at its initial, initial velocity. And it's moving down like this. We can consider down to be positive. Then the height right here is 0 meters. And here it's 1,609 meters. And you should see that that the 0 and the 1609 set up like that is consistent with down being the positive direction. So here's what we'll do now. y is y0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. And because it was launched horizontally, the initial velocity was 0. So that ends up being 0. And the way we've set this problem up here, the initial position is 0 also. So we, we just have this equation, y is 1 half at squared. And we can solve this for t. t ends up, when we do the math, ends up being the square root of 2y over a. And that's the square root of 2 times 1,609 meters divided by the acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. And I put all those numbers into my calculator, multiply, divide, take the square root, and I get a time of 18 seconds. So that's how long it takes the bomb to fall. That means we need to release the bomb 18 seconds before the plane is directly over the target. So, and that will determine the horizontal distance before the target. So I figure out that distance using the horizontal motion. So horizontally, this is what I know. The acceleration is zero horizontally. And the initial velocity we calculated was 134 meters per second. And now I also know the time is 18 seconds. And you can just say this, x is vt. Um, remember that equation just came from this. x is x0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared where the acceleration is 0 and the initial position is 0. So we just have distance is velocity times time. And if you recognize that, you don't have to write out that step. You can just go straight to this, x equals vt. And that's 134 meters per second times a time of 18 seconds. That gives us 2,400 meters. So the bomb has to be released when the plane is still 2,400 meters away from the point directly over the target. And, and that's a substantial distance. That's about a mile and a half. If you didn't take that into account, you would miss your target by a mile and a half. In the real world, bombers have to account not only for the motion of the plane, but also for air resistance. And air resistance really does matter at, a, at speeds like this. So the real, in the real world, the problem is actually more complicated. But this does illustrate an important point, an important concept of projectile motion.